Today's computers have become quite fast. Its brain, a microprocessor chip, can execute very demanding programs in almost zero time. To give an example, we have written a program that scans images coming from a 360 degree camera and tries to find a tennis ball in the image using sophisticated object detection algorithms. Upon movements of our ball, we try to track and follow its position immediately by controlling the camera's view. In order to have a smooth operation, more than one giga, that is one thousands of millions of operations, need to be processed per second by the microprocessor. Unfortunately, even a sophisticated single modern microprocessor may not offer the required computing power to process our program fast enough. Luckily, nanoelectronic technology shrinking allows us today to put not just one core on the same chip, but rather four or even eight. In order to integrate even more cores such as 16, 32 or meanwhile even more than 100 cores, these must be connected by network on chip, shown in green. Each of the cores can now operate as an individual worker and we can split the program for the single core evenly to each of the many cores and having them communicate through the network. By the way, the job to partition the operations of a single program into multiple programs each running on individual cores is also called parallelization. Sometimes this task is not as easy as shown here for our camera application. Great stuff! As we can see in our demonstration, 36 cores are sufficient to execute our application program in a timely manner. But are we done now and is our problem really solved? Unfortunately, no. Apart from parallelization, there is another problem today called competition. Like in a family between brothers and sisters, imagine the case that other applications want to run their programs also on your computer. This situation where multiple programs, shown by different colors here on the screen, may use the same resources together over time, is called sharing. Although sharing is nice and a great achievement of human social behavior, this common practice on many core systems is detrimental again for the performance of our image tracking program, unfortunately. Now, here comes the main idea of invasive computing. Rather than interrupting each program many, many times through the common practice of sharing, why don't we just give a certain number of cores to each program exclusively for its individual use so that they do not disturb each other? Like between brothers and sisters, give each a share. But like brothers and sisters also naturally do, you have to fight and invade as many cores as required for your needs at any time. Around 50 researchers from the University of Erlangen Nuremberg, TU Munich and the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology are currently investigating the principles of invasive computing, starting with language issues on how to express the hunger of a program for resources, how to moderate the assignment of resources to programs that we call claims to novel operating system concepts, the design of invadable processor cores, and finally the development of applications such as our image tracking demo you just have seen. Invasive computing offers many, many benefits, especially for a myriad of applications of the cyber-physical world, such as autonomous driving, medical imaging, and industrial automation. Here, real-time safety, reliability, but also security threats need to be solved and taken into account into program development apart from functional correctness. So, please stay tuned for our forthcoming episode on how these non-functional program properties can be individually guaranteed. Invasive computing for experts.